ready. Okay, perfect. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly webinar. It's We're already on June 19th. Can you believe it? This month is flying by. It's one of my favorite months. So of course, that's when it always goes by the fastest, right? Because you're trying to soak it up as fast as you can. Um, so let us know in the chat if you, if you and your family did something special for Father's Day. Hopefully, you were able to celebrate um, all those fathers in your life and do something special for them. Today, we are going to focus on juniper cream and juniper bath essence for people who struggle with uh, muscular pain and even joint pain and how to use those in different ways. Um, our sales tips will focus on how to reach people who are suffering from arthritis and muscle pain and kind of understanding what our ideal audience is for that marketing technique. Um, for business tools, we're also going to talk about um, sharing direct product links to our different social media platforms because we've had a few questions about how to do that. Like, how do I put a direct product link in YouTube? Does that look the same as when I do that in Instagram stories, for example? How does that, how does that differ? So we'll go over that really quickly as well. And then today we're going to do Canva boot camp part three. So we're going to work on how uh, we're going to work on a strategy for how you can create Instagram posts, um, like the little square format and, um, and how to encourage people to swipe on those and spend more time on your account. And then we'll follow up with a few time sensitive reminders. So for our spotlight like today, we're talking about juniper cream and juniper bath essence. Um, I know a lot of us have juniper cream because that comes with our consulting kit. It's one of our used favorites, um, but we'll also talk about ways to use the bath essence. Juniper is a really important natural ingredient that we use in these products because it's um, an essential oil that really has a refreshing and invigorating it has a refresher, refreshing and invigorating properties, so it feels great on our skin. Um, but it's you know used to alleviate muscle spasms and kind of tightness, right? So it's a really good anti-inflammatory, relaxing kind of essential oil. Um, it's also known for its antiseptic, astringent, and diuretic properties. So we're, when we're using our juniper cream, it's ideal for relaxing our muscles via massage, right? So circular massage with the cream. You can use this um, for people, you know, recommend this to people who are suffering from stiffness in their muscles. Maybe they wake up in the morning and certain muscles are sore and tight. Um, you might have customers too who have um, some circulation itch issues where they get kind of that like tingling sensation in their arms or legs, their feet, their hands. They might appreciate the warming effect of this as well. Um, for example, I have a friend who I'm always recommending this to because he has been barefoot in warm and cold weather his whole life. Like he loves to be barefoot, but now he's in his thirties and he's starting to get like that tingling, tingling sensation in his feet because the circulation has kind of suffered from that. Um, so I'm always telling him about juniper cream and how he should be massaging his feet with that. Um, it's very effective for body bumps and bruises, like so when you um, when you hit on something, right, it has that powerful analgesic effect as well. So using that in combination with our body balm is a really good co um, combination for like our athletes and things like that. Um, and remember that this is that localized heat action. So we apply this before and after playing sports to loosen our muscles through that relaxing massage. Now, when we talk about the juniper bath essence, we're still, they still have that same property, right, of juniper being um, relaxing for our muscles, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, etc. cetera, um, but we're combining it with hydrotherapy. So hydrotherapy is really important because warm water facilitates the dilation of our skin pores so that the products absorb better. So our bath essences are really powerful because they're in that warm water and our body just soaks them right up. Um, Hydrotherapy also helps detoxify the body. It helps improve our mood, releases tension and anxiety. Um, it invigorates and stimulates the senses. You know, like how you get that feeling just ah, when you soak in a nice aromatherapy bath. It's it's soul changing. I will I will swear to you. I I've been so much better since I started with used about like baths twice a week because it's good for the soul and the body and the mind. Um, it relaxes tension accumulated by joint and rheumatic pain, and it can comfort and improve the appearance of our irritated skin, just making sure that we have a moderated water temperature for that. So when we add juniper bath essence to our bath, we get that warming, relaxing sensation for our muscles. We can, this is great for before or after exercise or after a long um, strenuous day. It helps ease our muscle tension and that tingling sensation. And we can follow up a bath with this essence with one of the creams, whether it's juniper cream or comfrey cream, arnica, 
creamy gel, stand active. Depending on your customer's needs, they could follow this up with a massage and feel really great at the end of the day. Um, so when we are using this for hydrotherapy, it doesn't just have to be a full bath. Some people say, well, I don't have a bathtub at home or I don't have time for baths. And there are lots of different ways to put hydrotherapy into action with this. So you can put, if they can do a full bath, that's my preference. Um, you put one or two capfuls of the bath essence in a warm bath. Otherwise, if they just shower, just have them plug the drain so that the water pools at the bottom and they can put a half or a one cap full of the bath essence there and it will absorb well through their feet. Again, we still have that water that's going to dilate our pores on our, on our skin and help it absorb better. Um, you can do a foot bath, so that can be a half cap full or a cap full in a foot bath um, on a, in a compress. So you take a dish of warm water or cold water. Remember cold water, if they're trying to reduce inflammation, warm water, if they're trying to like relax muscles. Um, so you put a little bit of like about a half a cap full with a dish of water, take a, a, like a washcloth or a towel and dip it in, wring it out and set it on the affected area. And again, like 15, 20 minutes is a good amount of time to leave that on. You can soak. Um, this is a really good thing to demo for your customers. Let's say you have someone who has um, like joint pain in their elbows, for example. You can take like a bigger basin of water, a half, cap, half a cap full of juniper bath essence and have them soak that area for about 15 minutes. You can say 10 to 15 minutes is usually what people can handle sitting in that same position um, and let them soak and get that, that anti-inflammatory relaxing action right on that exact spot um, or soak like if there are a lot of people who have like arthritis and um, pain in their hands they, they would appreciate soaking their hands in this as well i wish i would have had this during my last pregnancy i got carpal tunnel so bad i could barely feel my hands for three months i definitely i should have had this i didn't i wasn't using that at the time but i'm like oh yeah that would have been great okay so um three levels of care remember that when we're we're talking about care for body aches and pains. Juniper is localized heating action, mostly for muscle pain, right? That's our biggest focus on that. Um, but it does have some analgesic effects. So it helps with pain relief for um, our joints and stuff as well. Uh, comfrey cream is great emergency care for sprains and strains. Um, that's what you'd put on as you're calling your doctor and getting other instructions from your, your physician. Um, and then for chronic joint pain, that's when we would use Arnica and Sanactive. Those are great anti-inflammatory long-term use products for um, chronic pain in our joints. Okay, so go ahead and take a screenshot of that if you need to, but think of a way, write it on your to-do list right now. How could you demonstrate juniper cream or for your customers this upcoming week um, to really show them that powerful action. People with chronic pain are always looking for better, um, healthier ways to deal with their pain. Go ahead and show that off, okay? Um, so talking, speaking of this chronic pain management, um, we wanted to talk more about arthritis because this is a huge population that we want to reach with our marketing, especially those of you who are on social media, but also within your own inner circle of people that you're talking to. Um, there are several common types of arthritis that you will come across. The biggest ones are osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis and consists of the wear and tear of the cartilage that surrounds our, our bones and joints. Versus rheumatoid arthritis, it's a disease in which the immune system is attacking the joints. Um, and it starts with the lining of the joints. And then, you know, if they have like that similar aching um, chronic pain that goes along with both of those. So when we're reaching out to our customers, um, it's important to know what a little bit about arthritis. So what symptoms are we going to see? If they have swelling and tenderness in one or more of their joints, um, they might have joint pain and stiffness, and those symptoms tend to get worse over time, right, with age. The main goal of arthritis treatments are to reduce symptoms, so reduce the symptoms and improve quality of life, keep people comfortable as these things are happening with their joints. Um, and there's a lot of risk factors involved, like family history, their age, their gender, obesity, prior injury, etc. Um, but reach out to people who have swelling, tenderness in their joints, joint pain, joint stiffness, etc. Um, and offer these tips to help them feel more comfortable. If you are looking for hooks that you could use in your social media content, remember hooks are like phrases that kind of trigger people's mind and have them stop their scroll and pay attention to your content. Um, things you could put on your social media, like when people first see them, things you could do with fewer aches and pains, and maybe you're showing like different activities that you can do when you're not in pain. Um, and then you talk about a pain relieving solution from use. Um, stop taking painkillers all day long and try this instead. That's a really good hook that you'll see often on social media. Stop doing this and try this instead. 
people are in, in, interested in learning about that. Why should I stop taking painkillers? painkillers all day long. Why would this be a better option? Um, how I learned to manage my pain with Swiss herbal remedies, for example, and you tell a story about that. Um, how to ease joint inflammation and pain in two minutes or five minutes, however long your demonstration takes. Um, two minute routine for joint pain management, things like that. People like quick, they like three steps, something easy that they can follow really quickly. Um, and having that in your hook right away, they say, oh, this, this is worth my time because this is gonna be short and to the point and I'm going to learn what I need to learn um, from this content. So take a screenshot of that if you want, just try to incorporate that a little bit into your materials as you share about not only Juniper, but any of our other pain management um, products that we've been talking about this month. Okay, so where are we going to find our ideal customers for this chronic pain management? A lot of times these pains come from people who are going to have like repetitive movements and motions in their job or in their daily life. Um, so think about like cooks and servers at restaurants would be a great ideal audience for this. Um, butchers, style, hairstylists or manicurists, etc., gardeners, construction workers, factory workers. Um, a lot of these jobs have really repetitive movements. Um, you might find also even like people at office jobs, they'll have a lot of pain and tension in their neck and back from being at a computer all day long or from their posture being kind of off during the day. Um, so think about people who are going to have repetitive movements or repetitive postures that might cause aches and pains. That's where you focus your marketing for your conversations with used. Okay. Um, all right. Now we have lots of sales going on with these products that are really helpful for us to kind of encourage people with a deadline to make that decision and get started with their used routine. So how can we put those sales into action? Let's say it's a Tuesday, a new flash sale has just come out. What do we do with that sale um, to bring it to life and spread the word to our customers? There's lots of different ways. We're going to share some ideas um, of how to share links and things like that in different platforms so that you get the word out quickly. So when you get information about a new sale or offer, immediately share a video or image talking about that offer with the needs that it meets for your customers. So always connect it to not just like, this is a sale and it's exciting, but also connect it to the need that it is going to meet for your customers. Um, talk about the product, its benefits, and include a direct product link. Now, there are lots of different places to share those images and those direct product links, those descriptions of the product. Um, if you are using WhatsApp, for messaging, um, you can do that in your broadcast lists. If you don't know how to do that, let us know and we can help out with that. If you have group chat started, you can put it in your status, in your WhatsApp status, which is really easy for people to take a peek at and click on a link. We'll show that in a little bit. Personal message, like text messages. Um, Facebook Messenger, is a it's, that's my top use for my customers. That's where I have the most contacts. Um, in, organized in one place. So you can send a personal message or you might have a group, like a group contact or like a group message started. I always think personal is better. Um, social media, so put it on your Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. We have that in stories and posts, etc. We'll talk about that as well. Um, Linktree is also a great way to put direct links to our different products. I, I try to update mine with the sales as they come out or as I create content about them. I have that close to the top of my link tree, which are those little buttons that take people to multiple links. Um, but you can put that link tree in your social media bio, your um, business cards or your contact cards in um, in your phone. So let me show you kind of what this all looks like, right? So if you are looking at a WhatsApp status, yes? So you're going to open up your chats, right? You open up your chats and you're going to click down here on this little, this little circle down at the bottom left that says status. And you'll see it pulls up here, um, this little camera next to my status, where you'll click on that. And that's where you can take your images preferably in like story format if you have them, um, and you can add them here to your um, status. Now, you put your images there and you'll see that down at the bottom, just like in any WhatsApp message, you can add a link and a description for these things. So here I have a tiny URL that I grabbed from my personal website um, and I've added that here in the description. Now, when people are looking at my status, which is kind of like a story, but in WhatsApp, um, my link becomes a live link. So I've literally just put it in the description 
with that image. But when people open it up, it looks like this, this actual link here that people can click on and go right to my website. Okay, so it could be a direct product link from your personal website or from the shopping website from your personal site. Okay. Um, for sharing direct product links for Instagram and Facebook stories, as you know, you have to have your Facebook and Instagram connected, okay? Um, and we want to post from Instagram stories and have that go to both because Instagram is where we have this option for adding a sticker to a link, right? So a sticker that is a link and that's where we're going to put our product link. So all we do is we go into Instagram, we click plus and we go into stories and we put up the images that, or the images or videos that we're going to share with it. And we click on this little sticker icon. It's like a little square face, yeah? There you will find a button that says link. That's the sticker for link. You put in a direct link to a product that is from your personal website. Or if you go to your personal website and click shop, right? You can grab the URL from your shopping site as well. And you just give it like a little name. And then it shows up as a little sticker. People can click on that. And here's the cool thing. You post it from Instagram and people can click on that sticker from Instagram or from Facebook. Yeah. So definitely do that. Have both of your accounts connected for personal and business. I sometimes post about my business on my personal account as well. Um, make sure you have both connected so that from posting to one, it shares to the other. Okay, go ahead and let us know in the chat if you have any questions about that. Now, TikTok. TikTok is tricky because TikTok, it, you have to have like a thousand followers in order to be able to post your link tree or any kind of link in your bio. So if you're not at a thousand followers yet, um, you have to be a little bit more creative. And this is where we, when we post our content, right, we're going to go click the plus button. We're going to choose an image or a video that we're sharing. Usually a video is best for TikTok. Um, and then we're going to use our Bitly service to make a short link. Yes. So remember, uh, probably about a month or so ago, we were talking quite a bit about Bitly and how to shorten links so that they're cute and look nice. Um, this is a way to make a short link that people can then take to their browser. It's not going to be a button for them to click on unless you have, you know, either a promotion that you've paid for or you have like a live link in your bio with over a thousand followers. But we can make this cute little link that we can post as a text box that people could then go into the browser and search for it really quickly and still get to your website. So what you'll do is go to bit.ly, um, B-I-T or dot L-Y, bit.ly, and you'll go in and create an account, click on create new, and you just put your, your direct product link in there. You can give it a title if you want. You can custom, you can customize the back half to something that no one else has used before. Just try to keep it short, simple that people can remember it. And then you click OK. It gives you this link and you bring that over into TikTok and just put it on there as a text box and people can quickly look that up that way. OK, now some people don't understand how Bitly works, like customers that are on there, they'll be like, your link doesn't work. So in your description, it can be helpful to just say there's a Bitly in my video. Just look that up in your browser or something like that um, so that people know how that works. I've had lots of comments of people like when I do this, they will be like, your, your link doesn't work but it's not a live link, okay? It's not a button that they can click on and it takes them right there. <coughs> so TikTok is a little bit trickier. Use Bitly's for that so that they can easily take that link, memory, go into their browser and they're good to go. Sorry, I'm having a coughing fit here. Um, YouTube also allows us to share um, full videos or shorts. Shorts are more like in the phone size format, right? And if you're sharing to YouTube, you can share direct product links in the description. So if you go into YouTube and you click on the little plus button and you add your video there, YouTube will ask you, do you want to share this as a short? You say yes. OK, um, and then you'll go in and give it a title and a description. In the description, you can talk about the product, list its benefits, et cetera, but make sure that you put a live link that goes directly to your product, whether it's from your personal website, from the shopping website, from your bit.ly, et cetera. You put a link in there and it will be a live link. When people click on it, if they click the little menu button here, they can, they can open up the live link right from the description. 
Okay. So in YouTube, you will not put stickers on there. It will just be in the description and all of those links are live, which is really convenient. Questions, questions. And lastly, Linktree, um, we, a lot of us have encouraged you to start a Linktree where you can have one link to the Linktree page. You go into Linktree, you create a page, you create your own personal link, and you can list multiple links there. You can turn them off and on, you can add new ones, you can rearrange them, you can change them over time, but you always just share that same one Linktree code or one Linktree link people go there and can see a list of links that you are able to update as needed. So if you haven't started Linktree yet, check that out today. It takes like 30 minutes. You can get a bunch of your top products on there. Um, you can put this on your business cards, et cetera. It's a great way to have all your stuff organized in one place. Um, and make sure that whatever product you're talking about is already on your Linktree. And then you just click share from Linktree and that will give you a link of how do you share your Linktree with other people, yeah? Um, and if you go into your phone contacts, okay, those of you who have iPhone, this is what mine looks like. Um, if you go into contacts and you'll see at the top, it says my card. This is like your business card for anyone that you contact with your phone, right? So you can add your photo, your name, some other information. Um, you'll see there's like a whole list for adding your email, phone number. Um, you can add URLs and links. So what I do for my, if I want my link tree in this little business card, so that if I contact someone via phone, they have all this information right away. Um, I click on add a custom label and create a label that says link tree. Yeah. And they, from there, I just put in my link tree link that I've gotten here from this little share button on link tree on the website or on the app. I'm going to take that link and put it in here. So that way, if I'm messaging with someone about use, this happens a lot of people who contact us from TikTok, et cetera. Um, I'm messaging with someone from about used products. They have that, that information. Um, just don't make sure you're not sharing like super personal information on there. I would use your, your email that you use for your used business, your link tree for your used business, your social media for your used business. Like try to keep it like, what are you okay sharing publicly um, for when you're contacting people this way? So this is a really cool tip. Um, and there's tons of things that you can play around with in there, but create your business, your, your contact card in your contacts. Those of you who have iPhones, this is what it looks like. Um, so that you have those links live and ready to go for people that you are messaging with. Okay. Questions about that. That was a lot of link talk. Go ahead and share any questions that you might have in the chat. Um, or if you need any of that, remember this is always recorded, so you can go step by step, you can take screenshots, um, you can reach out to us if you have any questions. Okay, I think we're good for right now. All right, and then we're going to continue with our Canva bootcamp. It's going to be kind of short and sweet. We've already talked about a lot of the different Canva tools that we have available to us to make images for posts and stories. You can make videos in there. There's tons of different things available to us. This week, we're going to focus on creating posts. I'm just gonna give you a simple format for how to create posts. Um, we're going to show you an example format, how to organize it, um, how you can search templates. We've already talked about that. We're going to talk about a website that's called Remove BG, which removes the background of images. So if you grab a, an image of Juniper Cream from the website and you want to remove the background so that we don't have like that white box around it, there's a website that does that really easily for us and it's free. Um, and we'll show you how to duplicate images in Canva so, and encourage people to swipe and spend more time on your posts. Um, that's obviously an Instagram thing, right? But we'll teach you how to, how to post um, something that people can swipe on Instagram and spend more time looking at your content. Okay, so um, when I am making an Instagram post, again, a few topics that I have in mind, I wanna, or a few like things I keep in mind is I want it to be simple and appealing to the eye. I want it to have something that stops the scroll and gets people interested. Um, I want it to look nice, but it doesn't have to have too much. I don't want a lot of wording on it. I don't want it to be too crazy. I wanna to try to incorporate images as much as possible because that's important in Instagram. Um, so, and I like to have posts that people swipe, okay? So what I normally do is I make multiple images. The first one has to be something like a hook to have people stop their scroll. So I have the essential oil we all need at home or stop doing this and try this instead or whatever, you know, like one of those hook statements. And then as people swipe, they're going to get little bits of information 
organized in a simple way, right? So it might be like, here's used lavender essential oil. That's the oil that I'm talking about. And then use it for relaxation and use it this way. And then use it for restful sleep and use it this way and use it for burns and bites and use it this way, et cetera. Yeah, so I kind of break down the information into small manageable chunks. And then at the end, the very last square, I try to do some kind of call to action, tell people what to do. So chat with the authorized use consultant for more natural remedies, um, send me a direct message with your questions, um, like and follow for this, like try to give them something to do so that they click on something after they're done reading this information. Yeah, because people sometimes will do that on their own, but they usually need a reminder for that call to action, do this. All right, so let's see how we can create something simple like this using Canva. Um, here, I'm going to try to keep it short and sweet. So go ahead into Canva, those of you who are following along with me live. Um, and remember that we usually start on our Canva page and go into templates. We go up to our search bar and look for something, um, a topic that we want to talk about. I'm going to put in lavender. Okay, and it gives me all different sizes and things like that here. So, and again, this works best on your desktop. You will see the best options, the most options on your desktop. So I go to here to all filters and I'm gonna filter some things out. Yes, I'm going to go into all filters. Here is my annotate on. I feel like I should turn that on so you can see a little bit better. Is that clear? Um, I go to, okay, so I'm in templates. I searched lavender. I go here to all filters social media, and I'm gonna choose Instagram post. That's the size I want, right? You'll see I can also choose, do I want square or portrait because Instagram gives us those two different options. I'm going to do square. Um, I can choose different themes. And for me, since I use a free account, I like to click down here on free. I only see this when I'm on my desktop. I haven't found it on the app or the website or like on my phone yet in the app. But when I'm on my desktop, this, this shows up. So free or pro. So if you're using a free account, click on free so that we kind of clear out all the pro stuff that you maybe don't want to spend your money on yet. Okay. And that's going to clean up my search big time. Yeah. So now I'm going to find a look that I really like. For, and try to keep like the same type of look for your content. Um, if you're going to stick with pastel colors, if you're going to use certain fonts, try to try to stay as consistent as you can, so that when people do check out your your profile, all your content kind of looks cohesive, right? So I tend to use a lot of pastel, flowery, natural looking images. So I'm going to pick this one, um, and I'm going to click on customize this template. Okay, and it's just going to give me one page, really simple. I'm going to come in and change up my, my text on here. I can change the fonts. I can change the size. I can move things around. Um, so I'm going to say how to feel more relaxed. Oops. And I'm going to just kind of make adjustments here on this text box size so that it fits. Um, I'm going to say in just three steps or something like that, or in just two minutes or 10 minutes or whatever my demo is going to be. This is my hook. This is my hook right here. Okay. Now, um, when I'm done with that, I am going to um, duplicate the page. So you'll see right at the top of the image that you've been working on, there's this little duplicate page option. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And now you'll see I have just made a copy. Yes, here is where I'm going to start putting in my product information, product benefits, demonstration steps, all the specific information for your post in small manageable chunks. Um, so here I'm going to do um, lavender essential oil. Okay, I can change this around. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this for now, just for quick demonstration purposes. Okay, now let's say this is probably a good time to incorporate some images, right? So I'm gonna show you how to quickly get a nice looking image without a background from our website. I'm going to go into my personal website. I'm going to look up lavender. Remember, if you're looking for like a set of something, you'll have to go to your shopping site for some of those images. But here I have lavender easily accessible right here. Um, so I'm going to click and open this up, okay? So notice I'm going to try to click on images to get the biggest version of them from the website. I also usually open them in a new tab. 
I right click and open it in a new tab so that I'm kind of reducing the, the, the way the websites tend to reduce file sizes when they're using images on them. So I've got it in a new tab, the image by itself. This is the clearest, highest quality version that I'm going to have. Yes, I'm going to copy it or save it. In this case, I'm going to save it because I need to upload it. Lavender oil. Okay, I'm going to save it to my desktop. And I'm going to take this image over to a different website to get rid of the background. I don't want the background on it. Okay, so I go to this background called remove.bg slash upload. I'm going to try to make that bigger for you, but can you see this? Remove.bg slash upload. I'll give you a moment for those of you who are following along live. And this is a really simple website that lets us remove the background from an image for free. Yeah. So all I do on this website, you don't even have to sign up or log in or anything. You just click upload image, bring in that image you got from our website. Okay. And voila, it is made, it has taken the background off for us. Let's say you don't want this box. Let's say you want to get rid of the box and you just want the oil on there. You can click on edit. Go to erase, restore, choose erase, choose how big you want that brush size to be. And you can just press, you just click and kind of cut off what you don't need. I might, I would go a little bit closer on that maybe, but it just takes it off for you like magic. How cool is this? On a scale of one to 10, how cool is this? <laughs> Share in the chat if you have a finger free. Um, so ooh, mine's thinking. This is spectacular. Right? So easy. So, um, and it's free. Like how often do you get something that works and is easy and free? Oh, and of course, well, as we're doing this live, it's telling me something went wrong, but that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna show you just on here. I've never had that show up before. So now I have this, I can download it. Or if you don't wanna download so many images, like sometimes it's nice to download to have it available on your desktop for use later. Um, but I'm just going to right click and copy image. And I'm going to take that over into my Canva design. I'm going to right click and paste. And there it is. Okay, so I've taken an image from our website. I've uploaded into remove BG into this website. I've, I've taken off the background, you can edit and adjust as you need to you copy and paste it back over here. And it looks so much nicer. You can also do things you'll see in canvas or in Canva that um, like if I click on this and go to, let me click out for a second. If I click on this and go to edit photo, I feel like my computer's a little tired here. Let's see, can we do it? Edit photo. You can play around with a lot of different like filters if you need to. I often do, as long as it lets me, I try to add shadows behind it. But Canva has been kind of weird about that lately where it doesn't let me put shadows on all of my images. But if you can, you can put like a shadow behind it so it makes it like lift up off the page. I don't know why it's been doing that lately effects. I'll have to play around with it and see why it gets kind of blocked. But um, but yeah, there's lots of different options for, for editing that if you need to, but normally it looks pretty good just like this. And there you go, you have that image and now you can keep making your duplicate. You can move your lavender over to the corner if you want. And here is where you're going to add your text boxes with the step-by-step -step demo instructions, the benefits of the oils. Um, just try to keep in mind that combining two different fonts can be helpful when you're doing that like one um one in cursive that's not going to work for this one but one in cursive and one non-cursive is a good way to kind of make your text look nicer um, and you'll just keep organizing like that so remember you'll do your hook image step-by-step -step instructions or benefits images at the end you'll do some kind of call to action and then you just download it and add that to your social okay to your social media some people will do this they'll go share share on social um, especially if you have a paid account that's pretty easy to like share it to your social media right from canva i personally am just old school like to download it have it on my phone 
or on my computer. And there I go into my different platforms because I organize it just a little bit differently. Now, one last quick tip, because I don't want to keep you too long. One last thing is that if you're making this kind of Instagram post that you're expecting people to swipe, what do you think we should add to these images so that people know to swipe them? Because Instagram will tell them like one out of six images like up in the corner, but they might not be looking for that, right? So what I will do is add an arrow to the bottom corner of my images so that people know to swipe. Um, all I have to do is go to my image, click elements, and I will search arrow. I'll do it, I already have one up, but I'll do that again. Just find an arrow that you like. This one is white. So obviously I won't be able to see it very well. So I'm going to just click on my arrow, select it, change its color to something purple maybe. Purple's big on my social media. Okay, and I just can copy that and paste it on each of my images as needed, right? I'll move this over here um, so that people know to keep swiping. Yeah, and then at the end, you just don't put an arrow. Okay, so that's another, this is a super simple way to make easy posts. And really, you do one design and you just duplicate it a few times and make minor adjustments. Go ahead and share questions that you have at this point in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. If there's anything else you would like to learn how to do on Canva, also share that in the chat for next week. Next week, we'll, we will go over a few other advanced options. Um, for those of you who are like, oh, I got this. I want to do something else. Um, we'll share a few more advanced options that you can keep playing with. I like this design. I've never used this one before. I'm going to save this and make it into something real. Um, okay, any other questions? I'm checking the chat, not seeing anything at this time. Okay, then we'll go back to our presentation and finish up with our last reminders. Um, so remember, you are what you do, not what you say you're going to do. Make yourself a checklist of what your goals are. What are you going to make in Canva to share on your social media? How are you going to talk about chronic manage or chronic pain care, arthritis care, et cetera, this week. Any new ideas that you have, please add them to your to-do list. So our call to action for this week, just keep making those simple images to post on your social media every day. We have these quick Canva tips, put them to use, try them out, play it around with it and see what gets you the best results. Remember, it's not always like you get a thousand likes in a day. Um, you have to keep posting to keep giving your content that meaningful boost in the algorithm. Um, but play around with the formats and see what works better for your audience. Also, remember to plan a weekly workshop or demo. Pick a day of the week that works best for you and try to keep that consistent so that people kind of know it's like every Wednesday at seven o'clock, there's going to be something in Angie's Facebook group or something like that um, so that people know that, okay, that's a regular thing. They can come in and learn every week and get um, some good tips from your workshops. You can just remember to put it on your calendar, invite people ahead of time, make it meaningful, focus it on deals that are going on or customers' needs that have come up, et cetera. Okay. Um, go ahead and share in the chat what day of the week you are working on um, setting up those weekly workshops or demonstrations so that you have it in your mind, mine is like Wednesday because I already have a group meeting with my youth team. So um, mine are gonna be Wednesday evenings. That's when I'm going to be on my computer doing a demonstration for my customers as well, okay? All right, so that is our weekly inspiration. Hopefully you've got tons of tips and tricks to help boost your youth business this week. Um, and those of you who are here with us live, just stay tuned for some time sensitive reminders.